someone who's um, a cartographer and uh, her most hated phrase is when people say I love maps. It's like when you're doing a job interview and you know, well, tell me something about yourself. I love maps. Oh. <laughs> right, right. So there's a top tip by the way. Um, so we all love maps, right? Well, here's the problem. Um, lots of people love maps. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we use maps in so many different ways, right? We use a map to get ourselves to this venue tonight. Uh, we use a map to show how fantastic our victory was in a presidential election. We use maps in all sorts of different ways. Um, we use them objectively. We might use them for persuasion or propaganda. Um, and we do that because people view them as a trusted mechanism. Um, you see a map, you generally, generally trust it. Now, we might be slightly biased in this room, we might not necessarily trust everything we see because we're looking at it a little bit more critically, but the general public are more likely just to, to view a map and say, hmm, hmm, that's kind of interesting. What does that mean for me as I go about my daily business? Um, oh, he's, he's a serial. <laughs> <laughs> he's a serial map abuser. So, um, for, for those of you that don't, don't follow the uh, American media and I really recommend that you don't. Uh, this, this blew up a couple of weeks ago, and I'm, I'm not going to spend three hours talking this through. But in short, what happened was this guy on the right um, sent out a tweet you know, saying, oh, Hurricane Dorian's going to come through the States. It's going to hit Alabama. I think the actual quote was, Alabama's going to get a piece of it. Okay, I don't know if that's a, a meteorological term or not, but anyway, there you go. So, the problem then became this, when he's showing a map that Noah produced in the White House, in the Oval Office, um, and of course the map didn't show this hurricane, uh, this hurricane, this cone of uncertainty um, touching Alabama. So apparently someone took a little black sharpie pen and drew sort of an extra bit on the map. But we all do that, right? Because we always draw in maps, we always draw, draw extra bits, we draw our little extra bits that fit our particular view of the world. Now, this is an extreme case because this guy is holding a very important office and this information is quite critical. Generally, the sort of maps I make, it doesn't matter if I make a bit of a a little bit of a Kenism here, and I don't mind I'll do that. That's fine. Um, but maps like, and actually, this is slightly tangential, but um, I, I think this whole um, this whole period in uh, American political history. By the way, each epoch in American political history is about two hours long at the moment. <laughs> so this this period, it, we can learn something. On the bottom of one of Noah's maps was this statement, which I think is wonderful. <laughs> if anything on this graphic causes confusion, ignore the entire product. So, that's going on everything I do. <laughs> okay, so, I, I, I tend to spend my life um, going between uh, cringing about bad maps and thinking about how we can make better maps. And so the rest of this presentation is kind of batting that idea backwards and forwards and seeing what we can learn from how people make baddish maps. And there's no more Trump, I promise. But there is some more Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we go. Right, so maps can be made well, okay? They can be made poorly, even if you know what you're doing. Um, and even if they're made well, they can still be pretty bad liars uh, and mislead the innocent. 
So, um, what I tend to try and do is, is implore people to not just dive into the map, but to actually step back and think about it a little bit. And think about what it is they want to do, what's the story they want to tell, what's the data they want to present, um, what's the idea that they need to communicate. Um, and usually a little bit of paper or sketch or something will um, clarify your ideas before you commit it to that awful computer machine. So, let me go back a few years. And um, this, was a, this was a map that was published. And as, as we do, we look at the, the Twitter web thing. And of course, everything on there is, is correct, right? <laughs> so I looked at this map. And I'm kind of hoping everyone in this room is looking at this map with the same eyes. So let's, let's all collectively go, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and then nobody's embarrassed if they don't know what's wrong with this map. So here we've got some concentric circles plotted across the top of a Web Mercator base map and it's designed to show how far the, the Proclaimers went in 500 miles and 500 miles more, except they wouldn't be concentric circles on a Mercator projection, okay? They would be slightly distorted <laughs> ellipses. Now, now, that might not be important and, you know, 99,000 people out of 10,000 whatever are going to think, well, what idiot is going to point that out? on the internet <laughs> and make a complete so I did <laughs> and um, yeah but I, I didn't just point it out you know this isn't this isn't a hey you you idiot you made a bad map how stupid this was all right I'll remake it I'll do it um, and it was done quick and dirty it wasn't a particularly lengthy process but the whole idea was just to make a map to say you know what if you're going to use that projection this is what the circle is going to look like and I went a little bit further, I used a bit of colour and so on. But the important thing about this map that the first one was missing is all those disclaimers down at the bottom, <laughs> which basically is the same as what Noah put on their uh, map only a couple of weeks ago. It basically says, don't believe a word of this, it's still crap. Because they, they can't walk 500 miles because there's water in the way and they could get on a ferry and they could do several laps of the deck. But how do I count any? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm going to, overthinking is what I did. So, uh, now I'm going to beautifully pivot onto the fact that I recently wrote a book, and here's a page from it. Uh, we'll be selling copies later. Um, here's a page from it. And um, imagine my surprise when the book comes back from two years' worth of work and multiple people looking at it, uh, and you open the book, and there is an error. And how fortuitous that that error brings us all the way to uh, Edinburgh this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, even, even when maps look good, they can mislead the innocent, right? So, it leads in the right position on these bottom two maps, but that counts for absolutely nothing okay. because it's completely wrong in the top one. Yeah. Now, I know how it happened. It was an unlocked layer in Illustrator, and I moved something I forgot to locked the layer before I moved it, and I didn't bother checking it, and nor did all the other people check the book. <laughs> and, and there we are, so that's in the book. <laughs> um, okay, in, enough about I, I Love Maps. So, um, I quite like beer as well. So I'd like to pour, pause for a second, look at this look, beautiful liquid. Okay, this wonderful array of different colours of liquid, different styles of beers. Um, different glass, that's just what a beautiful product it is. Um, so a brewery got in touch with me a couple of years ago and they said, um, right, we've got this database and we'd like you to make a map to put on the wall of our brewery. It's going to be about 25 feet long and about 15 feet wide. Now to me, that's like, cool, <laughs> okay. Um, that's free beer for life at that brewery. So I said, sure, give me the database. Uh, well, I say database, it was a list, uh, <laughs> and it had some various latitude, longitude, coordinate type things that were a little bit dirty and slightly missing in places, um, and it was really just a list by country, so it was how many breweries are there in each country, and then, you know, you can sort of look at where they are. So, there you go, that's the map. Nothing wrong with that, but are you going to put that on the wall of your brewery? No. No. Okay. So, you know, this is one of those quick and dirty maps. There's nothing wrong with that map at all. That's where all the breweries are in the world. Um, that's where they are. Now, 
Um, Liam, we, we, it's almost like we, um, we thought this through, uh, because he spoke about my colleague John Nelson, so I'm, I'm about to back mouth him too. Um, so if you give a data set to 10 different carto cartographers or data viz people, how many different maps and data viz are you going to get? <laughs> 10, right? They're all going to be different. So if I gave this data set to John Nelson, he would, and this is a quote, firefly the shit out of it. <laughs> this is what his map would look like. I absolutely guarantee it. Um, but I, I didn't want to do that. What would I do? I would just abstract the shit out of it. So my map ended up looking like that. Um, it's a cartogram. Okay, it's just basically the use of bottle tops, uh, sized by the number of breweries in each country with some flags. Now remember, this is a brewery. Um, it's going to be visual, it's going to be big. Um, it's going to be in the US, so it kind of helps that their flag's going to be the biggest. Uh, <coughs> these are all the ways in which you can use cartographic mechanisms to support the message. So I, I made that. I did actually get that first map on the map. <laughs> just in a slightly different way. Okay, um, sticking on the beer theme, um, this could be contentious. So I'm gonna talk a bit about BrewDog. <laughs> uh, so before I get going, because it's not gonna be pleasant, um, let, me, let me state categorically for the record, I'm a big fan of BrewDog. I'm a fully paid up member of Equity for Punks. There's my number if you want 5% off at any bar. And <laughs> Um, and I like the beer, but I don't much like the maps that they put out on their website. So here's one. This is the number of people who have signed up to their shareholder sort of thing in the States. And they base their brewery in Ohio, so you know you can see why Ohio is, is in red. Uh, they soon got rid of that. They favored this approach, a black background, very trendy. Um, and they wanted to say uh, something about uh, hot spots. So Ohio and California, apparently. Te Texas comes out pretty high. Um, now we can see some problems with this map, or at least I can, because they're mapping totals. This is a real bugbear of mine. You can't map totals on a car plate. It's got to be a rate or a proportion. God, you know, it's like I have to press auto whenever I say that every single time I present. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll try and help. Um, so I sort of said, you know, all right, I like the product. This is what I do for a living. Clearly, you don't do maps for a living. Um, you, know, this, this is, you can't do it. So what response do you think I got? It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> well, is that what Trump said about his hurricane map? <laughs> you know, it's just a bit of fun. I'm just, just doing this for kicks. So I said, well, that's fine, but the map's wrong. <laughs> so, you know, there's a, there's a point at which you, you, you know, it wouldn't actually be difficult to make the map correct. Um, so I kind of, you know, I, I thought I was being quite helpful. And then I went to visit the brewery um, about a year and a half later. Um, and I was staying there, and I said, well, you know, I'm staying here. I'm here. Free consultation. You've just got just to ask the question or sort of, no, absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, so I took the data and I kenned it. Uh, this is what the map would look like once it's been kenned. So I took the BrewDog corporate colours. I probably shouldn't have done, but I did. Um, I stuck the logo behind the map. I probably shouldn't have done, but I did. Um, and, and this is how you kind of start to make the map look a little bit more useful in corporate colour schemes on a website. But it's still totals. You could play around cartographically Maybe use dot maps, because actually Ohio does have a lot of uh, equity for punks. Or, if you've got some bottle tops lying around on your um, hard drive, you, you, think, you think, I know what I can do here. Um, that map I made a couple of years ago, I can basically redo it. So I did, and that's what it would look, look like with bottle, bottle caps. Um, do you think they took that up? No. No, so let's go back to the beer. <laughs> <laughs> All these beery colours. So back to John Nelson. Um, here's John and I uh, in London enjoying a pint of EBC 147, which is also known as SRM 74. Uh, that's the standard reference method and the European Brewing Convention for identifying the precise colour of beer. Now there's a lot of physics involved here, it's basically about light attenuation through 
a prism of the liquid that's like one centimeter cubed or something like that, and that's where my knowledge of the physics ends. But <laughs> it's basically a number. So you can categorize every single number of your beer, or you can categorize every beer with, with a number, and it can be uh, based on uh, the SRM method over on the left, or the EBC over on the right. Um, interestingly, <laughs> it's the same colors, it's just different numbers. So I'm, I'm European, and uh, certainly at the moment, <laughs> and uh, so I would make a map using the EBC scheme. John Nelson is not a European, he's an American, he would make a map using the SRM scheme. So I went on the interwebs, and I got the database, and I put the list into Excel, which is what we all do. Um, and I calculated from the SRM the EBC scores, which are 1.97 as a multiplier. Complicated, really difficult. Um, and then I went on the interwebs again, and somebody, somewhere, very helpfully, has allocated all the correct hex codes to each of those, those numbers, <laughs> thus saving me a good two hours of my morning's effort at work. Okay, so what did, I, what did I do instead? I went into my favorite piece of GIS software, which I'm paid to use, um, and basically converted all those hex codes into an EBC style. All right, now what did I do with that? I made a better brew dog map without the corporate colors, but I made it in beery colors, because you can make it in beery colors now. So this is all, this is all uh, uh, the totals, and this is what it looks like if you turn it into a proper coral plate. But remember, this is just the EBC color scheme. So I shared this very, very complex style with my friend and colleague, the John Nelson, over there, so that he could use the SRM equivalent to make the map. So what does his map look like? That's right, exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Two maps, exactly the same. That's brilliant, isn't it? Even though I said that if you give um, the same data to 10 cartographers, you get 10 different maps. So, um, well, what's the point of all it? I don't know, I don't know what point it is. <laughs> but it's an opportunity to talk about stuff that I can't when I'm doing a, a proper, proper professional talk, let's say. Um, so, the takeaway then is clearer maps. That's what we want from life. Uh, the moral of this light-hearted tale is that we all work with dirty data. Some of us work with dirty people with sharpie pens. Um, we can all make quick and dirty maps, but even a quick and dirty map deserves to be made correctly. Even if it's a 10-minute job, it doesn't matter. Um, so step back, think about the map. Um, don't presume you, you, your map is doing the job it's doing, and give your readers a, a, a reason to actually love your maps. So, we'll finish with I Love Maps. You know what's coming. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's me. Thank you very much.